Yes, I have returned. I've been back for about a week, as people should have figured out by now. And if you're wondering why you haven't seen any live reviews, let me explain why. We actually did do live reviews of both shows, Daniel and myself. There were a couple of others on the first night as well. And the reason you haven't seen that is because Daniel has the footage and he wants to edit it. And considering the perfectionist that he is, which is not a bad thing by any means, I'm sure he wants to make it not just informative, but fun as well. So I'm sure that's what he's been doing. I'd like to think that the video, or videos as the case may be, would be up this week, but who knows really. Um, in the meantime, I will not be doing solo live thoughts, mostly because the DVDs of these shows will be, allowed, will be out far quicker than I would have expected. So when I do... When I get those and do reviews of those, I'll splice in some live thoughts, live comparisons on the matches. And, you know, that will just reduce the risk of me repeating myself time and time and time again. So, with that said, now that it's summertime, and I can do videos a lot more often, I have topics in my head that have been in my head for a while, and I am now able to bring them forth to the camera. Starting with this one. What was the match of the year in 2005? That's my question. And the reason why I think to ask ask a question like that is because I think anyone would find this to be a legitimately hard thing to answer. Because Whether you're a fan of Japanese stuff or whether you like Ring of Honor. Because 2005 is a year where you don't just have people talking up those matches or the Japanese matches. You have competition from Shawn Michaels and Kurt Angle from WrestleMania of that year. And then you have the Unbreakable 3-Way from TNA. So I think this question is more interesting from this year than it is for any year... Probably in the past decade, I'd say. In the past decade we just experienced. You know, if you wanted to find another year like this, you probably have to go back to, I guess, 94 or 95, really. And my main goal with this video is not so much to answer the question right away. I will not be answering it at all in this video, as a matter of fact. But to recommend the Japanese matches from this year that I think everyone should see. That you could very well make the argument are perfect five-star matches. Because the thing about the best 2005 matches that makes them stand out a bit more they were all called perfect or as close to perfect as you can get by many people you know whether it's the WrestleMania match the Unbreakable match or some of these Japanese matches the Ring of Honor matches I took from a Sanders Robin list they are there for completeness not because I think they are particularly deserving of being there as harsh as that sounds that's how I legitimately feel um did I watch them before doing this video yes did I like them not really no um, I like the stiffness of Kenta and Loki, but that's about all I can say about that match. Um, Danielson and Strong was just too long for my tastes, and you know Dan Danielson was good on offense, but his offensive stretches in the beginning were just too short, and the longer, better ones came too late in the match for me to really care that much. So that's how I feel about that, those two. Punk and Aries, though, I'll, I'll say I thought was very good. And one thing I noticed about that match was the crowd. The crowd in that match seemed to be more concerned with the supporting the face wrestler than supporting the match itself, which is what you should want. Um, they cheered Punk, they booed Ares, and that was enough. You didn't need This Is Awesome. The match didn't get that chant, it didn't need that chant, and it was all fine. Um, you know, Ares was allowed to work over Punk. You know, Punk was allowed to make some okay comebacks. But, there were, you know, the, the big moves in this match, you know, they, were, they weren't... They were probably a few too many of them, but they were timed well. They were put at... Everything about this match seemed to be put at the right time in the match, is what I'm trying to say. It's probably the best quality about this match. And um, the transitions were, they were pretty decent as well, all things, all things considered. So I think that match is very good. Not great, but I didn't think it was very good, so there's that. And then you have Joe and Kobashi. And to me, a lot of the reasons why I used to love this match at one stage just aren't there for me anymore. I mean, you just look at the reasons why the match is good. Um, it's hard hitting, which, you know, I've seen a lot more hard hitting stuff at this stage to the, to the point where it just doesn't impact me in the same way. And uh, there's the fact that Joe was made to look like an equal against Kobashi. And my thing to that is, you know, the young guy versus veteran story I have seen executed to such degrees of quality that, that I never thought were possible. So to me now, Joe and Kobashi's story, is, it's good, but it's just it doesn't hold up quite, quite as well to me. Yeah, I still think the match is very, very good. And the best of the four Ring of Honor matches that I've mentioned, but it just doesn't hold up quite as well. But, you know, it's up to you guys that like Ring of Honor to, to tell me why I'm wrong and why these matches are so great. But, given that, keep this question in mind. And that's what makes 2005 kind of interesting to me. Um, are they as good as HBK Angle? That's my question. Yeah, that's kind of what makes 2005 interesting in my mind. 
So with that said, let's move on to the ProRes stuff. Two of these are very famous. You're probably familiar with them in some way. And the first one is Kobashi Kenta versus Suzaki Kensuke from Noah. Um, some people don't really relate well to this match, but you know it's, it affectionately gets called Chop Fest 2005. Whether you mean that in a good way or a bad way is um, your own personal taste. But the way I think you should look at this match is, it's the sporting atmosphere that kind of really highlights this match. This is the sort of match you can imagine, you can just imagine in your head. The Tokyo Dome is filled to capacity, and on one side you have Kobashi fans. The other side you have Kensuke fans. This is not how it really went, it's just how I imagine it to go. Uh, and the match is just bringing out, out of those two sets of fans, they're kind of colliding as, as, as the wrestlers just chop the hell out of each other. You know, they're kind of colliding. The match just brings out this intensely competitive atmosphere. It's kind of like a football match, really. And the, fat, the, fans, the crowd, in the reality, are just going insane for this one. And it's, it's the ultimate battle of endurance, you know. I, I quite like it. Um, if you haven't seen it for some reason, I would definitely recommend watching it. You might not like it. I know, I know, there, are, I know there are diehard pro wrestling fans that don't really like this match that much. Um, but it's something that everyone should definitely see, for certain. At least um, experience um, it, I would definitely say. And then there's the November tag, which is Kobashi and Shiozaki versus Suzaki and Nakajima. Your premise here is that Kobashi and Suzaki are the veterans, and Shiozaki and Nakajima are the young guys. Very easy. They do everything you would expect them to do with that dynamic, and they do it better than you would expect. That's all that needs to be said, really. I'm, going, I'm just going to say, it. if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's definitely, definitely worth it. Those are the two that Meltzer gave four and three quarters, which um, I think are the only two Noah matches to get that, and then of course the two five stars. Um, just to point that out, not that I would um, say that it, that has any bearing on how you should feel about them, but they do make the matches famous to an extent, so there is that. Um, then a couple of other matches to mention. The first one, we might as well stick with Noah here. Um, the first one is Kobashi and Shiozaki again, versus Akiyama Jun and Tenryu Genichiro. Not as famous as the, two, the previous two matches, but oh my god, it's easily a contender for the in the question of what was the 2005 match of the year. Um, Kobashi and Tenryu hate each other. Shirozaki is still the young guy who takes a beating, and Akiyama, Akiyama, funny enough, is nearly, is nearly just there to fill the numbers. And when you have someone with the talent of Akiyama, and he doesn't stand out that much in a match, you know that everyone else must have been absolutely amazing. And it actually is true. I'd say that every time, anytime Kobashi and Ten Leo are in there, it's absolute magic. So, to say any more would bring me closer to answering the question of this video, and I don't want to do that, so let's move on. To Kenta versus Sua, sports entertainment in pro wrestling Noah. Daniel, in his tribute to the late Joe Higuchi, talked about this match. Or to be more accurate, he talked about how Higuchi interacted with Sua. That is just one of the many ways in which Sua gets in touch with his heel character in this match. I mean, he basically does everything that you would never expect, never expect to happen in a Noah ring. And you know, when I say that, you might build up certain ideas of what happens in this match in your own head. I did the same thing when I read about this match, but even if you do that, trust me, there are things that happen in this match that just make you think, wow, I cannot believe that happened in a Noah ring. I would definitely say that this is... I'd probably say that this is the match where I supported Kenta the most, even more than the, the matches um, with Takayama, which is definitely saying something. You know, so definitely worth checking out. Um, you know, if you like, if you think sports entertainment should have a place in wrestling, you'd definitely check out Kenta versus Sue. It might be the best uh, example of that in Noah, at the very least. Um, probably find better examples in some of the more non-traditional progress promotions but for Noah this is this is balls this is amazing um, this is just so out of out there and against the grain that it just needs to be seen I'm going to finish off by mentioning what some have called the best Dragon Gate style match ever to occur and that is Shima, Don Fuji, Doi Naluki versus Saito Ryo, Dragon Kid and Horiguchi Genki the 2006 Ring of Honor match is famous, probably more famous than this one I'd say, and it features five of the six guys that are in this match. And if you're a fan of the 2006 ROH match, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. I'm not sure if it's the best match of its kind ever, but I do think that it's better than the 2006 ROH match, and I like that match a lot actually. I do actually like that match quite a bit. This one has the same quality of spots, and even manages to maintain some storytelling on top of that. That's a winning combination, I'd say. So I'd say check some of these out. Give me your answer. Anyone who's looking for links can send me a personal message. I will give an answer to this question in another video. I'm going to have a conflict. The reason, the reason why I didn't mention in detail 
anger and HBK is because my conflict is between how I felt about that match in 2005 when I was actually watching it and how I feel about some of these matches having seen them much later. That's kind of how, where my conflict is um, arising. Um, but I'll give an answer in another video. I hope to review some stuff that I've been overlooking recently. I mean, I haven't talked about a New Japan show since Wrestle Kingdom. Definitely need to correct that. And, you know, whatever else comes to mind. I'll talk to you guys later.